Zebulun, Naphtali, and the birth of Christ. Hello, everyone. My name is Al Persson. You can contact me at pastor at mascot.church. That's my email address or in the comments below. If you like these videos, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see if we can grow the channel. YouTube um, picks up the like, shares, and, sub and, and subscribes, and so on, and tends to put searches a little higher to the top. Anyways, let's get on to our topic. Zebulun and Naphtali are two of the 12 tribes of Israel. There is a reference to these two in a prophecy about the birth of Christ. And as it's coming up to the end of the year, the uh, uh, Christmas and so on, we uh, uh, put our thoughts in that direction. We kind of think about Christmas and think about the incarnation and so on. Now, I want to take you to this passage here and read it. And then we're going to talk about these two very interesting places. So let's just, um, let me just get this ready to go here. And let me read this from the prophet Isaiah. And it is a very well-known passage from Isaiah 9. I'm going to read all of this section if you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. It's the word of God. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he's made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod for his oppressor, you have broken on the day of Midian." For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle, tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his kingdom, I'm sorry, of the increase of his government, and of peace there will be no end. And on the throne of David over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So that is from the prophet Isaiah 9, 1 to 7. And so you'll notice, unto us a son is given, unto us a, uh, a child is born. These are critical passages about the um, birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so we notice these two names here, Zebulun and Naphtali. Now, there are two provinces or um, areas under the allotments in the land of Israel. I'm going to put two maps up, and you'll get a, an idea, and I'll use my mouse to point to those things. If you know the maps, then that's not such a challenge, but I'm not sure that everyone is across them. I frankly had to review them myself. So this is a larger map of the northern part of Israel. You can see down on, um, let's just come over here. You can see on this side the Dead Sea and the tribe of Judah, the, um, the tribe of Moab, Gilead, and so on. Up here, you have Zebulun and Naphtali in the north. I'm going to expand this out here just a little bit before I tell you the story. So this is Zebulun, Naphtali. You see some of these other names that you're familiar of, Adan, uh, Asher, Issachar, and so on. The city of Megiddo, which we've talked about early on. This is Mount Carmel, where um, uh, the prophet Elijah had his uh, occurrence, uh, his event, and um, the Sea of, Gen uh, of Genethoret, and so on. Okay, so Zebulun and Naphtali. Well, what is special about these two places? First of all, in history, sometimes in the scriptures, Zebulun and Naphtali have appeared together for um, significant reasons. So I'm going to take you to a passage out of the book of Judges, which talks about, um, this is the, the song that's sung after a victory, and it talks about the price that they paid. So stay with me here while I put this on the screen and read it to you. Why do you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the pipings, the pipings for the flocks? The divisions of Reuben have great searchings of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And why did Dan remain on ships? Asher continued on the seashore and stayed by its inlets. Here we go. Zebulun is a people who jeopardized their lives to the point of death. Naphtali also on the heights of the battlefield. 
The kings came and fought. Then the kings of Canaan fought in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no spoils of silver. So these are some of the places that we've already spoken about, Megiddo and so on. But you will notice that uh, the two tribes who paid a high price and who battled most fiercely for the victory were these two, Zebulun and Naphtali. So they had uh, an important time and place in the book of Judges. Now, 700 years before Christ, Isaiah prophesied. This event, the, the story of um, the judges, was many hundreds of years before then. The first prophecy we read, the first passage, was from Isaiah about 700 years before Christ. Isaiah prophesied the fall of the northern kingdom, amongst other things. Okay? And the fall of the northern kingdom came as Isaiah prophesied it. The two areas, the two tribes, if you will, or uh, uh, that were the first to fall under the king of Assyria were Zebulun and Naphtali. So I'm going to read to you a passage that highlights this here, not in totally clear language in terms of Zebulun. Nevertheless, it is, um, when you look at the maps, it makes sense. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came and captured I think it's Eljon, Abel Abel Beth Maka, Genoa, Kadesh, Hazor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and he carried the people captive to Assyria. Then Hosea, the son of Ella, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Ramalia, and struck him down and put him to death and reigned in his place in the 20th year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. Now the reign of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. So this is from kings. So what falls at the hands of Tiglath-Pileser, otherwise, otherwise called Pul, P-U-L, in the scriptures? He's given both, both names are used. What falls is the Galilee, okay, uh, and the land of Naphtali. So the first two, during the Assyrian captivity, the first two nations to fall, or tribes, areas to fall, were Naphtali and uh, Zebulun and Naphtali. That is very important in terms of of this prophecy here. It's really relevant. Now you say, well, Al, you know, we're talking about the birth of Christ, These two tribes, I don't get the connection. I'm not sure what's going on. In just a few moments, if this is new to you, you will. And then we're going to bring an other point that's almost never discussed as we roll this, to me, fascinating message to a close. So these two areas, the area of Zebulun and the area of Naphtali, Naphtali, tripping over my words here, my friends, were the first to fall during the Assyrian captivity. The northern kingdom fell at the hands of Assyria. Then Assyria was defeated in battle by Babylon, and then the southern kingdom fell in the hands uh, at the hands of Babylon. And you remember the name Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king when the southern kingdom fell. All of Israel, therefore, north and south, went into captivity. The first two cities uh, or areas were Zebulun and Naphtali. Well, how does that relate to the birth or the working of the Lord Jesus Christ? What's going on? Let me take you to a passage here in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Ready to go? And here we go. This is after the death of John the Baptist. Now, when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. This is Jesus. And leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. For those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
Okay, now this begins to make sense. Isaiah, 700 years before the birth of Christ, says that a a area that had fallen into contempt is going to experience a great light. What is the great light? This would be the area where the Lord is born, where the Lord begins his earthly ministry, and he begins to preach. And the book of Matthew says, yes, this is the great light that is spoken of. It's time now to go to another map and to look at some of these names. Then we're coming back to this passage, and I'm going to roll this together in a really wonderful way that I'm pretty sure most of you have not heard. If you've known this in advance, leave a comment below because it's... uh, It's not very well known. So if you remember my earlier map of Zebulon, it was kind of a classical line-drawn map. This is a little bit more detailed. We can see some of the cities. So let's come up here. I'll use my mouse to point. We'll look for some rather interesting and well-known names. So you can see the name Bethlehem at the top of the land of Zebulon and Nazareth at the bottom here. So the Lord was born in Bethlehem and and raised in Nazareth. Zebulon is called is called Galilee. That's the area of Galilee. This is Cana of Galilee. What's, what do we know about that? That's the first wedding that took place there. And over here you see Mount Carmel, uh, Carmel, huh, Carmel, where Elijah dealt with the prophets of Baal. You see some other important names here. And we're coming to just another one in a moment. Okay, so this is the Sea of Gennesaret on Lake Tiberias. You've seen that in the New Testament. Okay, so, okay, I know what's going on. This is Mount Tabor. This is where the Lord grew up, all of these places. Now, I want to go back to the passage that I just read. I won't come back to my face here yet. Excuse me. While he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee, leaving Nazareth. He went and lived in Capernaum. Capernaum by the sea. Okay, what sea? Let's go back to our map here. This is Capernaum up here. And you might recall in Jesus' ministry, he said, woe unto you, Chorazin, where unto woe unto you. He's he's actually um, bringing judgments. Pardon me. But this place, Capernaum, is where he dwelt, okay, by the Sea of uh, Galilee, all right, or Gennesaret. All right, all of these things begin to make sense now. Now, Al, you said that there was a bit of a spoiler coming at the end of this message. What's going on? Do you remember that I said that the fall of um, Zebulun and Naphtali, which Isaiah prophesied, which occurred 700 years before Christ, was at would be at the hands of the Assyrians, King Tiglath Pileser, otherwise known as Pul. Actually, his actual name was Pul, P U L. Uh, his a later given name was Tiglath Pileser, hyphenated. So, uh, remember I mentioned that? Well, at the same time or prior to this happening, actually, well prior to this happening, Jonah was sent to the Assyrians. Okay, remember Jonah? Jonah was sent to the Assyrians. God gave the Assyrians another generation after they repented before they were judged. And other prophet, Nahum, was sent to the Assyrians. And Nahum would pronounce a very specific judgment of destruction. He talked about the fact that Assyria would fall at the hands of Babylon, which it did historically. Nahum. Okay, so Nahum's prophecy was about the fall of Assyria. Let's see if we can hold all these things in our head. Zebulun and Naphtali, Zebulun and Naphtali were the first two areas to fall under Assyrian, under the Assyrian assault at the hands of Tiglath Pileser, and by the way, their fall was horrible. Okay? A prophet named Nahum does prophesy the end of this evil, the end of the Assyrian conquest, which did occur. Let's go back to our map and let me show you something very few people are aware of, and I hope you enjoy this. Jesus lived in the town of Capernaum. Remember, it says up here that he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee, leaving Nazareth. He went and lived in Capernaum by the sea. Here is Capernaum. Remember I said Nahum prophesied the end of the Assyrian captivity? The name, the N-A-U-M, Nahum, 
actually comes from the prophet Nahum. This actually means the place or the city of Nahum, which is really interesting. Capernaum is named after the prophet that spoke or prophesied the end of the Assyrian captivity (laughs) or the judgment of Assyria. Now look at what the scripture has done here in just a most interesting and amazing way. The Lord Jesus Christ came to earth to pay the sin price. He said of himself, I did not come to earth to be served, but to serve and to be a ransom for many. That's, you know, he was going to pay the price for many. That's what's his purpose in coming to earth. Okay, that's interesting. He talked about the fact that when his, he would be troubled, he would not ask God to relieve him of his suffering, but he would pray all the more to endure it. We see the Lord Jesus Christ praying to willingly bear the sin price. He took on himself the wrath of God. Just like Zebulun and Naphtali were delivered and saw a great light after their time of suffering, even pointing to Nahum who prophesied the end of the Assyrian captivity and ultimate judgment against Assyria, the Lord Jesus Christ living in the same places recalls the fact that humanity was bound by sin and bound by guilt before God, led into captivity. And his being, uh, his living in these very places demonstrates that he came to us in the place of our misery, in the place of our suffering. Him going to Capernaum is like a two thumbs up saying, just like Nahum prophesied the end and the judgment against Assyria, by being here, I demonstrate the judgment against sin and against all of those things so my people can be free. So there you go. You see how Isaiah chapter 9, the passage in Judges to some extent, the passage in Kings, and the actual birthplace of the Lord Jesus Christ, where he was raised, which is um, Nazareth, and then where he ultimately lived, all fit into this wonderful picture of these two places, Zebulun and Naphtali, that had been in bondage, who were freed, talks about the fact that we too, who've been in bondage, are free by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the price that he paid for us. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is a look at Zebulun, Naphtali, and the birth of Christ. What a wonderful topic. God bless you. We will see you later. We'll be back next week, Lord willing. I hope you got something out of today.